Hi, all. I'm uh, Joel Weltman. I'm one of the staff criticalists at the Animal Medical Center of New York. And today I'll be speaking with you about establishing THC intoxication within the emergency department. Cannabis cultivars and subsequent marijuana products have become uh, a bit more THC dense over the course of the past 60 years. In the past 20 or so years, there have also been uh, the utilization of synthetic THC concentrates. And so these compounds can either be taken as is in a synthetic form, and these are even utilized therapeutically in medical settings. But people are also now dissolving these concentrates and either adding them to plant to make the plant THC more concentrated or taking them individually. And these can also, again, contain quite high levels of THC. If we look into what types of things that dogs are getting into, according to the Pet Poison Hotline, they're seeing about 66% of THC exposures reported to them are from either homemade or commercial edible products. And only about 20% of people are calling the Pet Poison Hotline in regards to ingested plant material. And even smaller portions of people are calling about synthetics, concentrates, and medical products. And so if we think back to think to try to sort out how much we're, our patients are at risk for being exposed, typically a joint that somebody makes themselves will contain about one gram of plant material. And so you can expect that a patient could be potentially ingesting upwards of 200 milligrams of THC if they ingest a single joint. We tend to see clinical signs developing at about 85 mg per kg is what's reported. So a single joint is enough to lead to clinical signs in smaller dogs. In addition to plant, there's a fair amount of post-harvest processing that people are performing nowadays. And this includes oil-based THC extractions like butter, uh, marijuana butter, which people will use for both homemade as well as commercial available THC products. And further, there's also uh, THC-based creams, capsules, and vaporizers that people are utilizing nowadays. These are available mostly in commercial products, and a good number of these commercial products will actually contain the dose of expected THC within either the edible or the inhaled material. So I think it's important for us to consider this overall trend towards increased availability of products containing THC in the United States at least. Currently, there is no consensus on the ideal means of identifying dogs who have THC intoxication in the emergency room. And so typically, cases of THC toxicosis are instead identified based upon either known exposure and or consistent clinical signs. And I'm sure everybody listening to this has probably had similar experiences with these cases as I have, but these clinical signs are actually fairly nonspecific and overlapping with some pretty considerable severe neurologic conditions. And so with this increased availability of THC in dogs, it's going to be pretty important for us to identify means of identifying dogs that have been exposed within the emergency room. Point of care urine drug screening tests are readily available means of testing for THC exposure. These tests are mostly designed for screening purposes though, and are never really intended to provide a definitive diagnosis. They test for the metabolic products of THC in the urine. And in fact, the majority of these tests are investigating for a substance called 11 nor 9 carboxy delta 9 THC. Recently, I received grant funding from the AKC Canine Health Foundation to investigate point of care diagnostic testing for dogs exposed to THC intoxication. Our lab group looked to investigate the specificity of two commercially available urine drug screening tests for THC in clinical canine cases, the Alire and NarcoCheck systems. 